plate to potential nugget. I want to sort of move to uh, his inner journey. Again, the other yeah. thing that was fascinating about me was just the, not just the external struggles uh, yeah. with the British, but also the inner struggles. Again, uh, maybe to ask a more specific question, I'm also curious about uh, some of Gandhiji's habits and rituals mm. uh, in the in the quest for inner discovery. What about some of those things strikes you off the off the different things that? So I think, of course, there was diet. Uh-huh. Uh, there was uh, medicine. And then there was sex or celibacy. So, there were these three main obsessions. Well, there was a fourth which is interfaith harmony, which we have not talked about, which is some is the most important. And what kind of Hindu was he? But we can we can talk about that later. Now, in terms of his personal idiosyncrasies and eccentricities, he experimented a great deal with diet. So, it was, uh, you know, what should we eat? What is good? What is bad? What is healthy? What is unhealthy? Uh what excites the senses, what does not excite the senses. And it seems like a very scientific trial and error kind yeah, of thing. Kind of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then there was uh, medicine, where he went from being uh, someone who opposed modern medicine to someone who saw a place for it, particularly after he had two surgeries that saved his life, one for pines and one for pedicides. So he uh, uh, adopted a more plural, pragmatic approach to medicine. And then there was celib- celibacy, which is the most peculiar and bizarre thing, where he was so obsessed with celibacy that he conducted this strange, strange and notorious experiment of testing it by sleeping with his grandniece, which I described. Just before, chapter, the year before uh, independence. Yeah, right? which I described in a chapter of my book. Uh, and that came from some peculiar uh, belief that if you are sexually pure, you can control society and tame the passions. That if you tame the passions within you, you can tame the passions outside. The Hindus and Muslims both see each other. It's totally irrational and absurd. Observed and also, I say, uh, a manifestation of vanity. That if he is sexually poor, Indians will stop fighting among each other, right? So, then there is, in terms of his inner journey, his religious journey, which is very interesting and very novel and worth spending time on and rediscovering. So, Gandhi was a Hindu, but, and he even called himself Sanatani Hindu, but he was a very special kind of Hindu. For one thing, his Hinduism did not require a shrine to express itself. So, in adult life, he attended, a, he went to a temple only once, which is the Madurai temple in Meenakshi, because they had finally admitted Dalits. The kingdom of God was within him, Ram was in his heart. So that's the first aspect of Hinduism. Faith is within you, it's inside you. You don't need a church or a mosque or a, or a temple. Secondly, uh, there's this whole issue of the discrimination against Dalits, which he felt very strongly about and wanted to absolutely eliminate. Thirdly, he believed that he was opposed to conversion. And he famously said about C.F. Andrews, his closest friend, my job is not to make C.F. Andrews a Hindu and Andrews' job is not to make me a Christian. My job is to make him a better Christian and his job is to make me a better Hindu. By which he meant that you see your faith in the mirror, you see your imperfections and uh, you, you know, in Christianity there uh, are texts that glorify violence. So to be a better Christian would be not to pay emphasis on the texts that glorify violence. In Hinduism, the texts that glorify untouchability, and a good Hindu would be to remove those texts or don't pay attention to those texts. And so he, his attitude to faith was alter, stood between two extremes. On the one hand, you have the fundamentalists of so today, you know, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, who believe their faith is absolutely pure, certain, everyone else is an infidel or a bigot or a pagan, right? right. And other side, the atheists like Richard Dawkins who feel all faith is like crazy and superstitious and irrational. And it's so, a room for faith. But the faith must be personal, must not be imposed on others. And that faith could be improved and refined through interfaith dialogue. So I think he had a very interesting, unusual, and, uh, and that's part of his personal journey. He thinks about faith all the time. From when he's a very young man, he's reading religious scriptures, listening to them, having prayer meetings with texts of different traditions read, talking to Muslims, talking to Christians, talking to Parsis, talking to Jews. And I think that's an aspect of his journey, I think. And even talking to atheists. There's a very interesting book, uh-huh. which some of the readers may want to see. It's available online. It's called An Atheist with Gandhi. And Gandhi had a follower, an atheist follower called G. Ramachandra Rao, known as Gora, who worked in Andhra, who was very involved in the movement to abolish untouchability. And he lived with Gandhi and argued his atheism with him. And they had a very interesting argument. And Gandhi said, it's fine. I think uh, one of the quotes in the book uh, that struck me, uh, Ram, was, Gandhiji wanted to shut out the world when it came looking for him. Uh, uh, again, I'm just, one of the challenges that we face in the world we live in is just preserving our mind space yeah, yeah. to think about what we want yeah. to do when the world clamors for our attention. So what, what uh, in your research on Gandhiji, what, how did he go about 
So I think, so for space. example, uh, spinning. Now, spinning is an uh, is an activity in which you are, of course, doing labor. You are breaking down the caste barriers by you know, banya spinning. In fact, in one of his court appearances, he says that there's a caste because the artist he said farmer and weaver, right? So he wants and it's you are spending time with yourself. You know, spinning is also and of course then silence, walking. Walking is another activity in which you're, you know, sl- you know, like you have what, whatever you call it, slow food and slow this, right? So it's so I think any uh, and, and uh, the day of silence that he adopted, which is also a way of withdrawing into self. And did he keep that all the way? He started quite late. He had to be started only in the 1930s. In the last 10, 15 years of his life, he kept it. I uh, I'm not sure exactly when he started. I, uh, I'll have to check. But I think that's something uh, uh, that's. Uh, uh, you know, to this kind of mind space. Well, spinning is also a form of labor. I mean, spinning for him was also, uh, you know, kind of something you do regularly and also uh, producing something, feeling that you're doing something worthwhile. But also you, you're just with this machine on a human scale. It's kind of every human, human uh, at the human scale, you're communicating with the machine. Mm-hmm. You're not driving.